we are praying. And somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So, we are teaching on the conqueror of death and hell. We are referring to Jesus as the conqueror of death and hell. The word conqueror means someone who conquers. Conqueror means someone who conquers. Someone who defeats. Someone who triumphs. Or one who is a victor. Hallelujah. A hero. A subduer. A winner. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So when you hear of the word conqueror, he's talking about the fact that Jesus is a person who defeated death. Is the person who triumphed over death and hell. Jesus is the one who is who is victorious. Who was and who is victorious over death, over hell. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So that is what conquering is. Someone who conquers, someone who defeats. Hallelujah. And death, that means the end of life. The state of being dead. Death means the end of life. The state of being dead. And can also mean the power that destroys life. And hell on the other side means a spiritual realm of evil and suffering. L means a spiritual realm of evil and suffering, anguish and great sorrow, the abode of the devil and his cohorts. Again, I said L is a spiritual realm of evil and suffering, anguish and great sorrow, the abode of the devil and his cohorts, his guys. Let's pick our text this morning from Revelation chapter 1, from verse 17. Revelation chapter 1, from verse 17. It's, it's going to be a great time together in God's word this morning. Revelation chapter 1, from verse 17 to 18. Revelation chapter 1, from verse 17 to 18. Please, I would like for us to get our Bibles, either your electronic Bible or your art copy Bible. We have to look into God's work together. Yes, let's do that together this morning. Thank you. God bless you. So get your Bible, get your note, your writing pad, and let's let's do some reading, studying, and writing together. This this church, this church, though it's online, but it's church. Hallelujah. All right. Have you got your Bible? Okay. Revelation is one from verse seventeen to eighteen. Let's read together. He says, and when I saw him, the person talking is John. He says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Glory be to the name of the Lord. He says, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Who is talking here? Jesus was talking to John on the on the highland of, of Patmos and was saying to him, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. So Jesus Christ was telling John that this is my state. This is who I am. This is my status now. He said, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth, was dead, and behold, I am alive. So he was one time alive. He died. And behold, he is alive. He now said, forevermore. In other words, after resurrection, I'm not going to die anymore. I was, al I was alive before. 
then I died and behold as you can see I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore amen and now you know you know said something very significant he said and I have the keys of hell and of death he said I have the keys of hell and of death the word key from the Greek word means please please meaning just like the normal word a key to a padlock or a key to a door just literally or it can also be what figuratively in other words he has control he has the mastery he has triumph he has victory over hell and death he has control he has authority he has the mastery over death and hell Glory be to the name of the Lord. So if you want to take it literally, you want to take it literally as saying he has the key, just your the key to your door. Yes, he does. He has a key that opens hell and death. Literally. And figuratively, it means he has control. He has authority. He has power over hell and death glory be to the name of the lord that that statement is can only be said by the lord and savior jesus christ no man on the face of the earth who had lived before or who is living or who will live can ever utter such a statement to see i have the keys of hell and death <laughs> it's only jesus jesus the son of god that can make such a bold such an audacious statement that i have the keys of hell and death in other words he has the control he has the mastery he has the victory over death and hell he has dominion over them why he had defeated hell he had defeated death he had conquered and that's why he is the conqueror of hell and death glory be to the name of the lord jesus christ that same place that we read in 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 revelations 1 17 to 18 let me just read that place for us in amplified in amplified let me read it says when i saw him i fell at his feet as though dead and his place his right hand on me and said do not be afraid i am the first and the last absolute deity the son of god verse 18 and the ever living one living in and beyond all time and space that is amplified translation i died but see I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and Hades, the realm of the dead. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amplify just broke it down for us. It broke it down for us. Let me read again so that we can understand how Amplify actually translated as in scripture. Revelations 1, 17 to 18. He said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Absolute deity and the son of god and the ever living one living in and beyond all time and space i died but see i am alive forevermore and i have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and it is which is the realm of the dead can you see that amplified actually opened everything up for us to see so jesus christ was talking to john here that i have absolute control i have keys of absolute control and victory over death and of it is the realm of the dead glory be to the name of the lord jesus did ask absolute control over over hell and over death because the scripture made us to understand that this is jesus christ said and isn't that a good news that jesus has absolute control over death and over hell it was it, it, we have the scripture in first corinthians chapter 15 
1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 54 to 57. Paul was writing to the Corinthian church and he said, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 57. So when this corruptible shall have put on corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory in Christ Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thanks be unto God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture said, that is swallowed up in victory. He now said, oh, that where is your sting? In other words, oh, that where is your power? Where is your ability? Oh, at Jesus' resurrection, death, where is your sting? Where is your power? For death was swallowed up in victory. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Glory be to the name of the Lord. Oh, Jesus took authority. Jesus conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered death. He conquered hell. The same thing he demonstrated. The same, uh, the same thing he demonstrated with Lazarus. When Lazarus was dead, was dead. Do you still remember the Lazarus? Lazarus in the Bible, John chapter eleven. Lazarus, the friend of Jesus. The Bible said that Lazarus was dead for four days, and Jesus Christ was summoned. And when he got there, Lazarus was already dead and was already stinking. And the Bible said Jesus Christ raised Lazarus back to life. So imagine if Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, will it not be him that would now be dead that won't be able to resurrect and raise himself from the dead? Hallelujah. Let's see John 11, verse 23 to 26. John 11, the story of Lazarus. I just read briefly to us. John 11, 23 to 26. The scripture says, Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, John 11, 23 to 26. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. What a statement. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe this word? Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. So as I was saying the other time, that if Jesus could have raised Lazarus from the dead, how much more him? the resurrection and the life, won't he be able to raise himself from the dead? Lazarus was dead four days. In fact, the scripture recorded that he was already stinking. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 39. Or oh, that same chapter, verse 39. And Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Martha's sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not thee, that if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast had me. And I knew that thou hears me always. But because of these people would stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou art sent me. 
and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. For this he was already thinking. We read it from, from verse 39. Martha, the sister of Lazarus, said, Jesus, don't bother. Lazarus is already thinking. Oh, Lazarus is already dead, dead. He's dead and dead. But Jesus Christ said, Don't you believe? I said to you that he that believeth in me shall see the glory of God. So Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. So Jesus Christ had power over death. Even while he was on the face of the heart, he had, he had, and he has power over death while he was on heart. And so he was able to raise Lazarus from the dead. And so I declare this morning that everything, every good thing that seems to be dead in your life, that by the power of the resurrection and life in Christ Jesus, I declare they receive resurrection and they receive life in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that seems to be dead in your life, in your environment, in your finance, in every aspect of your, of your life, I declare that the resurrection power of Christ bring it back to life in the name of Jesus. I speak forth life into every aspect of your life. I declare a quickening, I declare a resurrection by the power in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Amen. So at Jesus' death, when Jesus died on Calvary cross Jesus died on Calvary's death we, we know the story of his crucifixion and he had to die the Bible says that after Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary after he died on Calvary's cross he resurrected from the dead on the third day Yes, it did. And so that's why we are celebrating this Easter. We are celebrating it because Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. He told them that he will be crucified on the cross. And after three days, he will rise from the dead. And he did. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Let's quickly see the scripture that, that buttresses this point. Luke chapter 24 from verse 1 to 12. Luke chapter 24 from verse 1 to 12. Luke 24 from verse 1 to 12. The scripture says, Now upon the first day of the week, early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them and they found the stone rolled away so let me explain that to you the scripture says now upon the first day of the week if we will go by the way the the death was the the, the burial was done we will say jesus was buried on 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 friday and on the third day which was sunday he resurrected and that's why he said now upon the first day of the week sunday is the first day of the week saturday is sabbath for the people of israel and so he said now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning just like sunday morning like this they came onto the sepulchre the word sepulchre means the the burial ground the grave bringing the spice which they have prepared and certain others with them so their intention was to go there and to clean up the body of jesus christ they buried him uh using our our own contest now they buried him on friday and saturday they couldn't go to the burial ground because on sabbath 
the the Israelites are not permitted to do anything so they couldn't come around to clean or to check the body of Jesus Christ and to you know to do some uh, to do some cleaning around his body and all that so they, they are to wait till the first day of the week which was or which is Sunday so and the Bible says, and as they found, and they found the stone, rode away. So the stone that was placed before the grave. So the way the 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 Israelite, the way they prepare their own grave, is that there will be it will be like a a a room, so to speak. In that room, it will have the the. The, the, the burial spot where where the let's say let's say it's gonna be if we are going to use a coffin where the coffin will be will be placed and that room so to speak we have a stone put at the entrance so if anyone wants to access the the body he will first have to uh, come through the door in their own case is a stone that is placed at the at, at the entrance so you come in through the the entrance when you come through the entrance the stole will have to be taken a, taken away and when you gain access into that room so to speak then you see where the the body has been buried inside the grave do, do you have an understanding of that now so that's what he's saying and they entered so they entered and found the body so the first thing and they found the stone rolled away so at the entrance of that of that grave room so to speak the stone had been taken away and they entered in and they found not the body of Jesus and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout behold two men stood by them in shining garments of course these are the angels and they were afraid and they bowed down their faces to the earth and they said unto them why seek you the living among the dead can you hear that see what the angels told those people that came to to look for the body of jesus christ they said why seek you the living among the dead he is not here but is risen hallelujah the bible says the angel said he is not here is no more here is no more in the grave he is risen he now said remember how he spoke unto you when he was still yet in galilee when he was still alive saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of the sinful men and be crucified and on the third day again and and be crucified and on the third day rise again and they remembered his word so the angels reminded them and they remember his word and returned from the sepulchre that is from the grave and told all these things unto the eleven that is the apostle and to the rest it was mary magdalene and johanna and mary the mother of james and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostle and their word seems to them as i do tales and they believe them not imagine then arose peter and ran unto the unto the sepulchre and stooping down he beheld the lining cloth laid by themselves and departed wondering in himself at that which has come to pass so mary and other women they were told by the angels that jesus is not here the question was this why seek you the living among the dead which means jesus is living now it can be found among the dead he is not here he is risen and so all of them they went to go and meet the apostles and they told them but these apostles could not even believe imagine jesus christ had already told them while he was on earth that he will be crucified by by this by these sinful people and he will die and on the third day he will resurrect and this was told to the apostles 
and they, they, they thought these were just tales. These were just idle tales, and they didn't believe them. So Peter ran towards the sepulchre, and fortunately, and unfortunately, he was he stood down, and all he could find was the cloth, the the grave clothes that was used to wrap Jesus, laid together by one side. And he departed and was wondering in himself all that has come to pass. So he now saw that what the master said has come to pass, that on the third day he will resurrect from the dead. So resurrection or Easter is not a fable, it's not just an idea, it's what actually happened. Our Lord Jesus resurrected from the dead. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. He was crucified and on the third day he resurrected from the dead. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The same the same story we have it in, in Matthew's account. And in this one, the Bible does understand that the, the, the this record, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead was greeted with an earthquake. It was an earthquake that brought about. So when Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, there was an earthquake. The earth shook and the grave was open. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Let's see Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 23 from verse 1 to 8. Matthew 28. So it wasn't something that was done quietly. It was it was it, it it was greeted with an earthquake. So the earthquake was something that shook the ground and Jesus Christ came out of the grave. Matthew 28, 1-8. It says in the end of Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. So can you see that in the end of Sabbath? On Saturday was their Sabbath, and it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. So that would be a Sunday. Mary came, Mary the Magdalene came, and other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. Can you see that in your Bible? There was a great earthquake for the angels. Why? Why? Where was an earthquake? He said, for the angels of the Lord descended from heaven. Can you see that? He said, the angels of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers, that is the keeper of the graveyard, they did shake and became as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciple that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth forth before you into Galilee. There shall you come and see him. Lo, I have told you, and they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciple the word. Hallelujah. So this is another account of Matthew. The, the first one we read was, was Luke's account. This is Matthew's account. So the Bible said that the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead was greeted with an earthquake. So there was a great Earthquake. Why? Because the angel of the Lord descended from heaven to roll away the stone. Now, that, that stone that was placed before the, the sepulchre or before the grave of Jesus was a mighty stone. And they, in, they actually ensured that that place was secured. I mean, the, 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 the people of the land, all, all the people that orchestrated the crucifixion of Jesus because they've had that Jesus Christ has said that on the third day he's going to resurrect so because they just thought that maybe he was just blabbing and he said this man actually said he resurrected so he, they they asked for permission from 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 the from 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 the from the 
heard and they, they told them that please give us permission to ensure that the grave is sealed and we put some officers there to ensure that this grave is protected lest some of his, his guys will come and take his body away and they will say he has resurrected. Let, let's see that same scripture. You, you, you will see that now. Hallelujah. Matthew 27 from verse 59 to 66. He says, And when John Joseph has taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the top door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and other Mary sitting over against the stone. Now the next day, that follow the day of the preparation the chief priest and pharisees came together unto pilate saying sir we remember that this deceiver said while he was yet alive so why was so it means that he actually died that after three days i will rise again command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure that is be protected until the third day lest his disciple come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so the last error shall be worse than the first Pilate said unto them you have a watch go your way make it as secured make it as sure as you can so they went and they made the sepulchre sure in other words, secured, sealing the stone and setting a wash. Can you imagine? So those guys, those uh, Pharisees, those high priests, because they were thinking that all the things that Jesus Christ was saying was just, you know, fables. They said so that his disciple not come and steal him. They, they, they asked the pilot and they gave them permission. The Bible said they put a stone and they sealed that stone in other words when the stone was put there it, it would be literally said like like they put a cement around it so that you can't just say you want to roll it away it will be difficult because it was sealed and they now put a wash in other words they put some people there to watch over it hallelujah but the bible said that the angels of the lord descended from heaven and with an earthquake, the stone was rolled away, and Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Death could not hold him down. Oh, the grave could not hold him down. Jesus resurrected on the third day. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, so when Jesus Christ died, he died, and when he died, he was separated from God. So, I just want to give us some reasons or some instances behind this. So, when Jesus Christ died, he died, and he was emptied of God, he was separated from God. That's why the Bible said, when Jesus Christ was dying on the cross, that Jesus Christ cried, Eli, Eli, Lamang Sebachtanin. In other words, it means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So, when Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross, he was separated from God. Why was he separated from God? Because on that Calvary's cross Jesus Christ became sin he didn't become sinner because he never sinned but he became sin he became the embodiment of sin that is what the Bible to, uh, said to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 21 the Bible says for he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus so Christ became the embodiment, the totality, the, the figure of sin on Calvary's cross. And by so doing, God could not behold him. So God was separated, or better still, Jesus was separated from God because he became sin for you and I on Calvary's cross. And because of that, and because of that, the separation from him was 
from God, better still, was imminent because God could not be old sin. God actually separated from Jesus. That was the first time ever that Jesus would be separated from God. And this came to be because Jesus had to take on sin for you and for me. He had to take on sin so that by him becoming sin, he can die for our sin on Calvary's cross. And so he can obtain an eternal redemption for you and I. And so, at his resurrection, at his resurrection, it, it, it required a joint effort of Trinity, the Godhead, to bring him out of the grave. So, Jesus, the Son of God, was to be raised by the synergy of God the Father and God the Spirit. How do we know this? Let's quickly see Colossians chapter 2 from verse 11 to 12. So, at Jesus' resurrection, he took a joint effort, the synergy of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit to bring about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Colossians 2 from verse 11 to 12. Colossians 2 from verse 11 to, to 12. So we see God the Father at work. The Bible says, In whom also you have you are circumcised with the circumcision made with hand, made with that hand. So, sorry to say, let me come again. In whom also you have you are circumcised with a circumcision made with that hand, in putting off the body of sin, of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Can you see that? It took the operation of God upon Jesus to raise him from the dead. So, so to speak, God had to perform an operation a fit operation on Jesus to raise him from the dead. So we can see God at work here. God the Father performed an operation, a fit operation on Jesus, and he raised him from the dead. Can you see that now? So you can see God the Father at work. So God was the one that performed that operation over him, or the greatest surgeon that ever lived so but this one is even more than a surgery because jesus was dead dead so god had to perform a faith operation upon jesus for him to be raised from the dead and also so we, we've seen god the father at work now let's see god the holy spirit at work let's see romans 8 verse 11 romans 8 verse 11 romans 8 verse 11 it says but if the same Spirit of Him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by His Spirit that dwells in you. My emphasis there is, but if the Spirit of Him, who is talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that same spirit that raised up Christ shall also quicken your mortal body. So we can see God the Father performed the operation upon Jesus and the Holy Spirit raised Christ from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ was a joint effort of the Trinity. God the Son was to be raised. God the Father and God the Son were in synergy to raise Him from the dead. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So you can see that Jesus was brought back to life, was raised from the dead by the faith operation of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you will say that while that yes, you agree that Jesus Christ died, but why will Jesus Christ go to hell? Jesus had to go to hell and he had to go to hell for some reasons he went to hell 
for some reasons and I will quickly explain the reason why Jesus Christ had to go to hell Jesus Christ went to hell when you hear the word hell it means uh, it, it can be better said as uh, so when somebody dies when any man dies the person goes to where we call the abode of the dead or the underworld it, it, the person that dies go to the abode so there is a place called the abode of the dead so where the dead are or better still the underworld so from the Greek word the abode of the dead is referred to as necros it means the necros from the Greek word which means the place of the dead the state of death or the dead so when you so when the scripture says in Romans 8 11 if the same spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead if the same spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead the word the dead means necros means the place of the dead or the state of death so when anyone dies the person goes to the abode of the dead he goes to the place of the dead so just like we we, we, we have in the story of Abraham uh, the Abraham the story of Abraham the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16 from verse 19 talking about how the rich man died and how Lazarus died that Lazarus was taken to Abraham's bosom and the rich man was taken to hell so now let me quickly clarify that so uh, as I said that when anyone dies the person goes to the abode of the dead or he goes to the underworld from the Greek word necros the abode of the dead is from the Greek word necros where it, it is a place where the dead goes so now when the Bible is now referring to to the different places where, Abr where Abraham and Lazarus were and where the rich man was there was uh, a, there, there was something to to separate where they are. Now the Bible refers to where Abraham and Lazarus were as the Abraham's bosom. So we can say that that abode of the dead has two different and two distinct compartments. One is Abraham's bosom, which is otherwise called paradise and the other apartment is what L but the Bible said in this same uh, Luke chapter 19 if you go through it we won't have time to go through it if you read through it that anyone that is in L L there is the is the abode of the unrighteous dead so anyone that died and never believed in God will go to L the word L there means Hades is a place or a state of 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 the unrighteous dead. So now, as I was saying before, I said that when anyone dies, the person goes to the abode of the dead, which is necros in Greek. But even in this abode of the dead, it is it has two compartments. One is what Abraham's bosom, otherwise called paradise, and the other compartment is what is hell which is in the Greek means Hades, which means the temporary abode of the unrighteous dead. So anyone that died that doesn't uh, believe in God and doesn't accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior will be in this place, in this temporary abode. So this is where all the unrighteous dead are, Hades, hell. But anyone who believes in God will be in Abraham's bosom which is otherwise called paradise so the, the the likes of david joshua moses you know caleb and so on noah and so on will be we were in abraham's bosom all of these still in the abode of the dead but in this abode of the dead we have abraham's bosom and we have what l otherwise called what Ages. So, so one is for the the righteous dead, those who believe in God, and the other, which is hell, is for what the unrighteous dead. So you can see two two different places. So please, when you read through Luke sixteen, 
from verse 19 you'll be able to see all that so and you'll be able to really have a better understanding of what i'm talking about so when jesus so when jesus christ went to hell so he went to this abode of the dead the right word will have been used is what he went to necros to the underworld and he went there you say why would jesus have to go there yes jesus had to go there because he had been made sin what takes anyone to hell is because they what they are sinners and because they didn't accept Jesus they didn't believe in God so Jesus now being made dead on being made sin on Calvary's cross and he died as an embodiment of sin we have to go to hell which is the temporary abode of the word unrighteous dead so Jesus was taken to hell why because now he had become sin an embodiment of sin and the devil and his guys has the right to take anyone who does not believe in god or who does not accept jesus christ in this in this time now they they have right to take such person to hell which we call it is the temporary abode of an unrighteous dead so Jesus had to go there so he was taken to hell now that's why the reason why we know that Jesus Christ went to hell is because the Bible said it in in Acts chapter 2 from verse 24 to 27 Acts chapter 2 24 to 27 the Bible says whom God had raised up having lost the pain of death because it was not possible that it should be holding of it for David speaketh concerning him I'm reading Act 2 24 for David speaketh concerning him I foresaw the Lord always before my face for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Now, this scripture that we read was was Peter retreating what uh, uh, David said in the book of Psalm. David was writing prophetically about Jesus and Peter here was quoting what David said in Psalms. If you want to go get, get that reference, Psalms 16 from verse 9 to 10. He said, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will I suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Who was David talking about here? David was prophetically talking about Jesus. That is saying that thou will not forsake, thou will not leave my soul in hell. In other words, David was seen ahead of time that Jesus Christ went to hell. And Jesus will not be left in hell. Neither will God allow his only one to see corruption. In other words, Jesus will not be left in hell. And Jesus will not suffer corruption in the air, in grave. Hallelujah. So this buttresses the fact that Jesus Christ went to hell. And so he went to hell for this reason. So we say, okay, so why why did he go to hell? Now, he went to hell. The reason why he could go to hell is because on the cross, as I said earlier on, number one, the first reason is because he must go to hell. He must. Why? Because now he, he had become sin an embodiment of sin on Calvary's cross and since he died as an embodiment of sin hell devil and his fallen angels has right over his body over everything about him and that's why they had to take him to hell now Jesus became a prisoner in hell he became a prisoner in hell. Romans 6 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So anyone that sins will die. So Jesus Christ died not as a sinner, but he died 
as an embodiment of sin. Second Corinthians 5 21 said, For he made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus. For he made him who knew no sin to become sin. Jesus never knew sin. Jesus never tasted sin. But God made him to be sin for us. And that is why it was possible for him to go to hell. That is why it was possible for for demons of hell to drive him down to hell. If not, they would have been able. So that's why he had to go to hell. So I put I said first he must go to hell. He must because he had become sin. And anyone that sins will, will die. And anyone that dies will go to hell. Anyone that dies in sin goes to hell. So Jesus had to go to hell. And he had to do this because he had to go to hell also because of other things. The Bible says that Jesus going to hell was crucial. Because if he didn't go to hell, he won't have the opportunity of destroying the devil. We will get there now. But let me just quickly go so we understand that he must go to hell. Because now he had become a prisoner. He had become sin. So by him becoming sin, it was possible for hell to lay hold on him and drag him down to hell. Not just not just Abraham's bosom now. Hell as a temporary abode of the unrighteous dead. So he was taken there as captive. He was taken there as a prisoner. And he had to go. He must go there. And secondly, he had to go there and by going there he accomplished some things for us so the first one is that he must go there because he had become sin secondly he had to go there now by necessity it is necessary for him to go there because by him going there he is going there to accomplish some tasks for us the first of that task is that he went there as our substitution. Or better still, he went there as a substitute for us. So as a substitution for our sake, Jesus had to die and go to hell. He had to die to take our place so that you and I will not die and go to hell. Jesus had to die as our substitute. Somebody shout hallelujah. He had to die as our substitute. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 14 said, Who gave himself for us? Who gave himself for us? That we might that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. Titus 2.14, he says, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us? In other words, he gave himself up. He died for us as our substitute. If Jesus didn't die for us, he wouldn't be able to redeem us. He wouldn't be able to take our place. So he died for us so that he can, he can, he can go to hell for our sake. So that we won't have to go to hell. Hell there, it is temporary abode of the unrighteous dead. So Jesus dying and going to hell was of great import for us he died as a substitute for us he died and he took our place so that you and i would have to die and go to hell somebody shout hallelujah galatians 1 4 also said who gave himself for our sins can you see that who gave himself for our sins in other words he substituted himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our Father. So it was God's will that Jesus will be substituted for you and I. So that in being our substitute for sin, he will also by the same virtue go to hell. Anyone that has sin in him. 
in the in Jesus' case, it became sin. He will have to go to hell. His going to hell was a substitute for us, so that we won't have to die, and we won't have to go to hell. What what a great love that Jesus has for us, taking our place in sin, taking our place also in hell. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Romans 5, 8 says, For God commended His love towards us. Romans 5, verse 8, But God commended His love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God commended His love. So all this was on the basis of love. But God commended His love for us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He became our substitute. He became sin, and He died, and He went to hell, so that you and I will not die in sin, so that you and I will not go to hell. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, he did this on the basis of love. He did this according to the will of God our Father. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Ephesians 1 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood. So in dying on Calvary's cross, he shed his blood so that we can have redemption. And so by him going to hell and resurrecting, we can have forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So we can see the first, the, the first importance of him going to hell. He went there as our substitute. Secondly, on that, on that, on that the, the importance of going to hell. So I said, the first one, why Jesus had to go to hell? Number one, he must go to hell because he became sin. Two, he had to go to hell as a matter of what importance to accomplish some task, four tasks. A of those tasks is what he went there as our substitute, and I've explained that to us. To, uh, B on that, that is that he went there to conquer, to conquer the devil and his guys he went there to conquer glory be to the name of the lord so he went there to combat with the devil and his court he went there to have a spiritual combat definitely since hell is a spiritual a spiritual realm the fight there was a spiritual fight and he did all that and thank god he defeated the devil and his court and he won and he had the victory and he triumphed over hell and over the devil and his court somebody shout hallelujah glory be to the name of the lord so since he went there as a captive he went there as a prisoner since he was made sin he went there so his freedom from hell will involve some spiritual combat it will involve demonstration of spiritual authority and thank god jesus is the son of god it is impossible for hell to hold him down even though the devil was able to lay hold on him because jesus has become sin but it was impossible for hell for the devil to hold him down in hell jesus is the son of god let's quickly see hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 are we getting blessed this morning glory be to the name of the lord Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2. From verse 14. So I said on this on this part that Jesus went to hell to conquer hell, devil, and his court. Hebrews 2 from verse 14 to 16. It says, For as much then, I'm reading Hebrews 2, 14 to 16. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death can you see that through death he might destroy him that had past tense that had the power of death that is the devil 
So we can see the import of Jesus Christ going to hell now. The Bible says that that true is death. True Jesus Christ dying, true is death. He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So, which means Jesus' death was pre planned by God. <laughs> Everything that Jesus passed through was already pre-planned, foreordained by God. So when the devil was putting it in the heart of those uh, uh, high priests and the Pharisees and all that to crucify Jesus Christ, when the devil was putting it in the heart, they didn't know that they were acting out a script that God has already written. God had written that script even before the foundation of the world that Jesus will have to come as man to the world. Jesus will be beaten and crucified on Calvary's cross and he will have to die. All of those things were preordained by God. All of those things were scripts that God has written concerning Jesus Christ and Jesus will have to carry out all of those things as part of his assignments on the face of the earth sent by God. So now the Bible now says that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. What that means is that Jesus' death on Calvary's cross gave him the access to go to hell and in going to hell he can destroy he can conquer he can paralyze the one that had past tense the one that had the power of death that is the devil hallelujah can you see that now so it was important that jesus christ had to die and jesus will have to go to hell so that he can destroy he can have a combat with the devil and the hell and he can destroy him and take authority from him and the continuation of that scripture now says, Hebrews 2 14, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So he did that. So the Bible says, through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and also to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage so jesus christ went there to conquer death and to give us redemption and deliverance over death glory be to the name of the lord glory be to the name of the lord hallelujah 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 so jesus christ died he went to hell and he had this combat with the devil and his courts, a fight of, of, of authority, oh, a display of authority. And thank God, Jesus is the Son of God. He was able to conquer death. The, the death he was able to conquer the devil and was able to conquer hell and the devil and his guys. And the Bible says he was able to destroy him that had the power over death, even the devil. Let's see also another scripture that buttresses that, that same thing that we just talked about. Colossians 2 verse 13. Colossians 2 from verse 13. Hallelujah. Colossians 2 verse 13. How are we getting blessed this morning? Glory be to the name of the Lord. Colossians 2 verse 13 to 15. He says, And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, at he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of all the nonsense that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it and took it out of the way, leaning it to the cross. Can you see what he did by dying on the cross? He now said, Having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, 
triumphing over them in heat. Glory be to the name of the Lord. He said, Avon spoiled principalities and power. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in heat. So the, another 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 translation said, Avon disarmed. He said, having disarmed principalities and power, having conquered, having destroyed principalities and power. So, Jesus Christ going to hell was also for a conquest. He went there for a battle. He went there to defeat. So, that's what this question says. Having spoiled principalities and power. When did this one happen? When he was in hell. Having spoiled, having disarmed, having paralyzed principalities and power in hell. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let me quickly read that same scripture. That verse 15 is amplified for us. <laughs> Excuse me. He said, when he had disarmed the rulers, I'm reading from Amplified now, verse 15, Colossians 2 15. He said, when he had disarmed, in other words, he has taken, he had collected from them everything that he are using as their, their ammunition. He said, and he had defeated them, said, when he had disarmed the rulers and authority, those supernatural forces of evil, operating against us he made a public example of them exhibiting them as captive of his triumphal procession having triumph over them through the cross so literally when jesus christ combated with them in hell he fought with the devil principalities and power and the Bible says he defeated them. After defeating them, he collected their authority. He disarmed them of all of their spiritual ammunitions. He destroyed and, and he, 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 he dispossessed them of their, the armories in their arsenal. He took everything that they have for, for, their, for their fight, for their... So when you look at the devil and his guys now, they are armless in in other words they don't have anything to fight against any believer they have been disarmed the the uh, their armory has been taken away everything that they have in their in their arsenal has been destroyed their their their, their weapon of war has been taken away from them by jesus glory be to the name of the lord he said when he had disarmed them the rulers and authority, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. He now said, having collected all of their power, all of their weapons, all of their all of their armory. The Bible now said, Jesus Christ made a public example of them. In other words, what he made a spectacle of them. He led them. So he he was going ahead of them, and he like in other words, the way you parade um, slaves. Jesus disarmed them and he made a parade of them in hell and everyone was looking at them when he had disarmed them so Jesus Christ was going and he was parading them see oh, I have defeated the devil principalities and power I have defeated Elo and he was making a procession so he was, he was leading them and all of them were coming like putting chains and handcuffs in their hands, in their leg, and was leading them. See, I have this. I have disarmed them. I have defeated them. I made a. a I have. I have a victory over the kingdom of hell, over the devil. So Jesus Christ made a public spectacle of them. <laughs> what? What a belittling experience for the devil and his guys. The God, Jesus made a spectacle of them he made a he made a public display of them and triumph over them over his cross so jesus christ went to hell to achieve this he went to hell to disarm them to 
dispossess them of all of their weapons, all of their power, all of their all of their authority, and he rendered them useless. Somebody say useless. He rendered the devil and his cohort useless. That's what the scripture said. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us that is in hell while he was in hell he made a public example of them exhibiting them as captives so he led them captive in his triumphant possession so jesus was doing and they were coming after him as his captive as a slave with chains and fetters of iron all around their hands, all around their legs, and they were just moving like like zombie, <laughs> following after Jesus because he has triumphed over them. He conquered hell, he conquered the devil, he conquered the grave, he conquered death. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The message translation said, He stripped them all, he stripped off all their spiritual authority he said he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority he stripped them he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and march them naked through the street <laughs> that is message translation let me read again message that you said he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and march them naked through the streets <laughs> what a shame for the devil so the devil who used to be the the king of hell jesus christ dispossessed him and dethroned him of his power and he became useless he was naked he was made naked and jesus led him as slave and as a captive of his triumphant possession, glory be to the name of the Lord. So, as that was happening, when you read in Luke chapter 16, about the story of Abraham, uh, Abraham, the rich man, and Lazarus, the Bible said, in that story, please, I would like for us to go through it, it talks about the fact that that abode of the dead, which I called Necros, which is the abode of the dead, which I said is compartmentalized into two, Abraham's bosom and El, or Hades, Abraham's bosom, which is other word called paradise. The Bible says is in this is in the same uh, place, but there is a big gulf between the two, a big separation between the two. But the Bible makes us understand that why is Abraham was Abraham and, and Lazarus when the Abraham's bosom that uh, the rich man can see them from El, from Hades. And you go through it, you will see. So, which means when Jesus Christ was doing all that, those who were also in Abraham's bosom could also see the victory of Jesus at his conquest. They could see. So, those who are in hell and those who are in paradise in Abraham's bosom could see. And everyone globally, the universe, could see that Jesus Christ actually defeated, disarmed, paralyzed, and made a public spectacle of the devil and his guys. So as it is right now, as far as anyone who believes in Christ Jesus is concerned, the devil is has been disarmed, has been made paralyzed. He has nothing whatsoever to use against you. He doesn't have anything, no arm, no ammunition, so to speak. Nothing to use against anyone because Jesus Christ has disarmed him. That's why the, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 28 when he resurrected and said, and he said unto them, All authority, all power has been given to me in heaven and in heart. What he's talking about? He had taken all power that is existing, he had dispossessed the devil of all his power, all his authority. Oh, glory be to the name of the Lord. So the devil is just roaming about as a toothless dog. He doesn't have anything, no ammunition, no power, no authority. All authority belongs to Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
Oh, time will not permit me to continue in, on, on the other two points that I want to share and, and to wrap everything up. But I, let me just stop it. Maybe on Wednesday, we'll continue this teaching. But from what we've been able to share this morning, it's clear that Jesus, Jesus' death was crucial is going to hell was important and everything that he did for us was vital for our redemption for our salvation for our victory and for our enthronement on the face of the earth glory be to the name of the lord hallelujah oh i feel like shouting somebody shout hallelujah 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 glory 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 be to the name of the lord philippians 2 verse 9 talks about from verse 9 that was talking about that that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven on earth and underneath the heart so the word underneath the heart talks about the the underworld talking about necros now the the, the the temporary abode of the dead which comprises of Abraham's bosom and 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 Abraham's bosom and Hades hell so to speak but now Currently now, when Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, Abraham's bosom, which is paradise, has been relocated from 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 the under from underneath the earth into heaven. We we'll continue on that place. I will expand more on that when we talk. But just know that now Abraham's bosom or paradise is no longer underneath the earth because when Jesus Christ defeated the devil and his guys he also led all these people who have been waiting in abraham's bosom he took them with him into the heavens hallelujah i will explain that to us very uh very very clearly on wednesday glory be to the name of the lord but the bible says that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow in heaven on earth and on that they had so even hell when they hear Jesus' name it rings bell ah that Jesus that came to destroy and defeat us and collected every of our ammunition every of our authority ah guys bow so when you when you make mention of the name of Jesus before any demon before any devil before anything that is contrary to the plans of God they must bow they have to bow they have to bow it is a name that is known both in heaven on earth and harder in the heart glory be to the name of the lord so jesus did all this for our sake and that's why the teaching of this morning is jesus the conqueror of hell and death the conqueror of hell and death so when it defeated the devil when defeated the hell he also resurrected on the third day and so everything was balanced he defeated hell he defeated the devil and his and his and his guys and he also defeated death death that spirit that that brings someone into into in, in, into separation from god hallelujah so it destroyed death it destroyed hell it defeated death it defeated death and it defeated the devil glory be to the name of the lord and that's why we are celebrating easter we are celebrating the resurrection of jesus from the dead from the scripture we read we read about the fact that on the third day when mary and those women went to check jesus the bible says the angel told them why seek you the living among the dead jesus christ is alive he cannot be sought for among the dead he said behold he is risen somebody shout he is risen oh jesus is risen glory be to the name of the lord he is risen shout hallelujah he has resurrected he is resurrected from the dead glory be to the name of the lord somebody shout hallelujah he is the conqueror of death and of hell and so is alive today he defeated the devil 
he made a public spectacle of him, he paralyzed him, and he made a public display of him. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. That song says, for the dead, for death could not hold him captive, even in the grave, even in hell, 